Good evening and welcome to Thursday's Midlands Today from the BBC. Tonight, not guilty. A jury clears the eight men accused of murder during the Birmingham riots. The men were said to have deliberately run down three friends during a night of violence and heightened tension in the city. A jury decided that the deaths of Haroon Jahan, Shazad Ali and Abdul Musavir were a terrible accident. The three were hit by a car while they were guarding shops against looters. It was revealed in court that a detective chief inspector had lied on oath. Well, the judge and police have now appealed for calm on the streets in the light of today's verdicts. Tonight, we're back at the scene with our correspondent Peter Wilson, who's followed the story from the outset and has been speaking exclusively to the father of one of the victims. But first, with today's developments in court, here's Bob Hockenhall. Cries of delight, hugs of relief, as the defendants were reunited with family and friends after many months on remand. Their trial lasted three months, yet it took less than four hours to decide there'd been no deliberate plan to kill brothers Shazad Ali and Abdul Musavir and 21-year-old Haroon Jahan. The quick end to the case surprising everyone, including the legal team. Well, these young men have been in custody for a, a long time, and bearing in mind the length of the trial, the jury verdict very quickly that none of them was guilty. So I think that's, that says it all, really. When the three friends were hit by a car last August, Birmingham was said to be in the grips of unprecedented civil disorder. But during the court case, it emerged the senior investigating officer, Anthony Tagg, had lied under oath. He's now being investigated by the Independent Police Complaints Commission. At a news conference, West Midlands Police denied this had compromised the entire prosecution case. Whatever the officers uh, are alleged to have done, had it been so serious as to require the halt of the trial, then that's what the judge would have ordered, and he specifically did not do that. Ian Beckford, accused of purposely driving his black master into the three men, had always maintained it was an accident and he'd been trying to escape. He told the trial he was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and had been frightened as up to 100 men gathered on the streets. The families of the defendants have always felt that public opinion was against them. They're angry at what these eight young men have had to endure. And when the verdicts were delivered by the jury, they shouted their thanks. Spontaneous applause from one of the defendant's fathers. But following today's sudden verdicts, everyone in authority is appealing for calm on the streets and no repeat of last summer's troubles. Bob Hockenall, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham Crown Court. Well, after the verdicts were read out, the judge turned to the father of one of the dead men, Tariq Jahan, and praised him again for what he called the wonderful things he had done last August to prevent what could have been a complete conflagration. Mr Jahan remained impassive throughout today's events, but during the past year, our special correspondent Peter Wilson has spent time getting to know the man who tonight is once again calling for calm. Here's his exclusive report. I heard the roar of a, a car, I think I just saw a black flash, and um, I heard the impact. And to me the impact had sounded like two cars had collided together. Last August, parts of Birmingham were on fire. Chaos seemed to reign. On the Dudley Road, three men were thrown into the air, hit by a black Mazda car. Tariq Jahan tried to resuscitate the dying men, but it was only as he knelt by the third man that he realised that it was his own son, Haroon. At one stage, I laid down next to him and put my arm under his head when I'd given up doing what I could for him. And um, I was speaking to him and trying to comfort him, and I said to him, you know, Haroon, you know me, you know I'm your father here. And um, hey, you know what I'm like. And I'm telling you, son, that even if the angel of death comes, I will send him back. He's not taking you today, son. <laughs> As the news spread outside the hospital that all three men were dead, emotions amongst the crowd were running high. A few hours later, Tariq Jahan spoke out. Step forward <coughs> if you want to lose your sons. Otherwise, calm down and go home. Tariq Jahan has been praised as a peacemaker. He's been showered with awards, 
but he does have a violent past. He admitted to me serving a prison sentence for robbery in his youth. Even this year, he was convicted of assault after a road rage incident. He was spared a jail sentence because of his extraordinary actions during the riots. So just who is the real Tariq Jahan? I'm no angel, you know. I've got a lot of anger and, and, and uh, inside myself too. I was a young man when I, I did most of my stupid things. Um, I didn't have a, it's not an excuse, but um, I didn't have a mother to, to, to guide me in the right way. Haroon Jahan was 20 years old. In this family video, taken at a children's birthday party, he's seen with his mother, brother and sister. He was a car mechanic. At the garage where he worked, his older brother showed me Haroon's pride and joy, a high-performance rally car. If there was, like, mechanically anything wrong, Haroon would be sorting it. If there was something like polishing, etc., etc., that was me. Get the car ready for the weekend and we'd just go chilling with that dad. So that's why this car was important, just to bring us together. The family are very close and also deeply religious. Tariq Jahan's daughter, who's training to be a lawyer, says her father's actions in helping to heal communities has shown Britain a different side to the Muslim faith. Just because you're a Muslim and you may follow your religion devoutly doesn't mean that your reaction would be extreme or radical or whatever. Um, that's not what our religion teaches us. And I think my father portrayed that very well. The huge shrine that existed here, the flowers, the posters have long since been cleared away. There's just a few words left on this lamppost. Murdered, 10th of August 2011, protecting our community. At the time, it was felt that the death of these three young men helped to quell the violence. But what, if anything, has their legacy been? Shazad Abdul and Haroon, all three of them. The community looks at them as three heroes. But uh, my faith tells me three, um, three martyrs, three men who died for protecting others in their community, you know, defending homes, properties, businesses and, and people. Today's not guilty verdicts came after a trial lasting 12 weeks. The Jahan family have attended every day. Talking before the jury decided that his son had died in an accident, Haroon Jahan's father said he'd leave justice to God. Whatever the Lord tells me, you know, whatever their outcome, whatever their decision, I have to accept. I, um, I can bang my head against the brick wall and complain. It makes no difference. You know, whatever the outcome, once again, it's in his hands. All three men are buried together at Handsworth Cemetery. It's part of one form of Muslim tradition that no raised stone is set in a dead person's memory. Almost a year on from their deaths and the riots, feelings are still running high, and Tariq Jahan is still calling for no one to make war out of his family's grief. Peter Wilson, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. And Peter joins us now from Winston Green in Birmingham, where the three men were killed last summer. Peter, how are people reacting in the community tonight? Well, first things first, let me uh, assure everybody out there that Tariq Jahan asked for no financial payment for that interview. He spoke to me and I was able to ask any question I wanted to ask. As far as the mood here, there's lots of small shops, people are getting on with their work and they say that it's been peaceful here since August and they want it to continue that way. There are extra police patrols, and I have even been told that uh, two units, two patrol vans who were down in London for the Olympics have been brought back just as a precautionary measure tonight here in Birmingham. Are you surprised at the verdict? I wasn't surprised at the verdict. Uh, at various times throughout the trial, this case could have collapsed. All eight defendants made it clear that they had also come under attack from missiles, bricks and stones that night. And the driver of the car, Ian Beckford, 
said he was taking evasive action. And, Peter, the police handling of the case is very much under the spotlight, highlighted by the judge's remarks that an officer lied in court. Yes, in, in my experience, I've never known um, a High Court judge to say that a senior West Midlands officer had lied under oath. It was all about the evidence that had been given to the defence and now a, a huge question mark, really, about that investigation. Peter, thank you. Well, joining us now in the studio is Dr Derek Campbell, a government adviser who also witnessed last summer's riots. Um, Derek, you're actually going to be meeting the trial judge and a number of other senior judges in, well, the next half hour or so. What are you going to be saying to them? Well, there will be a number of questions that were put to me by members of the community as to, you know, how do judges arrive at decisions when the evidence seems to indicate something else? And it's being able to go back to the community with some answers to find out, you know, how do we actually ensure that when something is brought before you as a judge, that justice is not only seen to be done, but it's also felt to be done in the right way? Have you ever been asked to do anything like this before? It's the first time I've ever been uh, in a position like this. I feel very privileged because it's very difficult to meet a judge and to be able to put questions to, to senior court officials mm -hmm. like this, it's, it's, it's something that I will make the most of. How tense are things, in your opinion, in the city tonight? Uh, well, th strangely enough, there, there, there is some tension, obviously. There's a great deal of disappointment from the Muslim community and in particular the family because justice doesn't seem to have been done. Um, from the black community, there are a series of meetings taking place tonight. There's a lot of work going, going on right now to reassure both sides of the community. But to be fair, the community seems to be trying to get, come to terms with this and to take it in their stride. So the tension at this moment isn't as high as we expected it to be. OK. Why do you think this leaves police relations with the community? Well, the police don't seem to be coming out of this very well in light of the comments by the judge. The relationship with the communities and the police is one that we need to work towards improving. The police are trying to make efforts, but I still think there's a lot of mistrust. But we are confident that if we continue to work together, we will achieve the outcome that we're all aiming for. Dr. Derek Campbell, thank you very much. Coming up later in the programme.